exception handling in Python. In this video, we'll take a look at how to handle Python exceptions, and including user-defined exceptions. We'll start by looking at the script myerror.py. You'll notice a couple of things inside this script. At the very top here is a class called myException, which inherits from a Python exception. So this is a user-defined exception. In this case, the exception has a constructor, which takes a file name and a message as arguments, and then assigns them as attributes, those values as attributes, to the exception object. We also have my function, which takes a file name as an argument, so that would be a file name string. It tries to open that string as a file object and then close it. And it handles the Python exception file not found error, in which case it raises my exception, passing in the file name as the file name and the message the file name doesn't exist as the message. My function also has a finally block, which is executed whether or not the code inside the try block succeeds or fails. And that will just print a message saying, thanks for visiting my function. Down here in main, we have another try and accept syntax. Inside the try block is a call to my function with the first argument of argv, that is the first positional parameter given to the script, as the argument passed to my function. And so we would expect at this point that sys.argv at index 1 would contain a string which is an existing file name. This try accept block handles two kinds of errors. First is the index error, and second is my exception. We've seen that my exception is raised from inside my function, and so this is the place where my exception will be handled. The index error, which is a standard Python exception, would be raised in such a case where we try to access an index of an array, but nothing is stored at that index. In this case, sys.argv at index 1. If nothing is stored there, the index error will be raised, and we will handle that right here. So let's see how this code works together. If we run my error without any positional parameters, we get the index error. And here, instead of the traceback that we might expect when encountering errors, we've handled it appropriately and printed out an informative error message. If we do pass in a positional parameter, we don't reach the index error, but we do run into my exception. So recall that my exception has a message and the file name and we are handling that by printing out the message followed by the file name on the next line. 
Notice also that we've printed out the phrase, thanks for visiting my function. So we know that we actually entered my function and we completed the code in the try except finally block. Finally, in this case, was just printing out this message and it executed even though the code in the try block failed and we found an exception. Notice also that it printed first, meaning that before the exception was handled in the block main, we finished all of the code in the finally block inside my function. So once again, in the first case, with no argument, we had an index error because nothing was stored at sysargv index 1. There was no positional parameter given. In the second case, we caught my exception. Since this executed successfully, but this did not. We got the file not found error, which raised my exception. It was caught in main, and we printed out this informative error message. Understand that littering your script with try, accept, finally clauses is not always the best way to handle situations. For example, we could just as easily inside main have said if not length of sysrv equals 2, that is sysrv0, the name of the script, and sysargv1, the name of the file, then we could simply print a usage message and exit. Or run the script in else instead of printing the usage message. In this way, we can avoid try finally and handling exceptions. It's a little bit cleaner and maybe a little bit more readable for the user.